Hi and welcome everybody. Here we are again, Robin, the Sudoku guy, with some more tricks and techniques on how to solve Sudoku puzzles. First of all, let me say how much I appreciate the opportunity to, to share this. And if you want to see more, go to YouTube uh, or you can go to my website called sudokuguide.com and it'll take you to all my lessons. There's over 80 of them. Our first session today will be on matching pairs again. Let's have a watch. Now this lesson is somewhat different from all the other lessons in that I'm just going to be spending the lesson explaining the power of the matching pair. There's many things that you can do when you've got matching pairs. And what I'm going to show you today is not a puzzle but an example. We call it a scenario. Later on in the course I also do some scenarios. Here we go. If this particular row, and I'm talking here rows, this is an example of a row, this is an example I'm going to explain of a, of a column, and this is a, an example of a block. They don't relate to each, any, any, in, to each other. So what I'm going to show you, let's say you had a puzzle and you had this along a row. You had a, a matching pair, 3636, three, and one empty cell. It's so easy to find that empty cell. All you have to do is to count up to nine and see which ones are missing. But let me show you how you do your counting. One, two, three is already taken. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We found out that the five was the one that was missing. So we put in our five. That was as simple as anything, isn't it? Now let's take a column. We've got a column where you've got a 3636 three, six matching pair, and the way to find it out, find out what this one is, is simply do the same sort of thing, but with a column. One, two, this is a three, four, five is missing, six, seven, eight, nine. So the five that was missing goes there. Now let's take the uh, block. We have 3636 three, with one cell missing. You see, the key is to look for these things. So often when you're doing Sudoku puzzles, you forget to look for these things. Uh, for example, I was working with a former student the other day who was stuck and she'd forgotten all about doing the vertical and the cross checking. And once you did that, then the whole puzzle came together. It's amazing sometimes. All you need is one number. And once you put that one number in, a whole puzzle comes together. That's exciting. Okay, let's take this one now. We've got a 3636 three, and an empty cell. Once again, we count through. One, two, three is, in, is spoken for. Four, five is missing. Six, seven, eight, nine. So this empty cell has to be a five. And that's how it works. The key is to look for that situation. Now, what say you've got a row where there's two numbers missing? Now what do you do? Well, we, we, you've already learned that if you've got two numbers missing, you can guarantee that those two numbers missing will make up a matching pair. Well, the same thing happens when you've already got a matching pair. Okay, so we go one, two, three, four is missing. So we put a four here and a four here. Five, five is missing. Put a five there and a five there. Six, seven, eight, nine. We've come up with two matching pairs. Do you know what? Quite often when you get to more advanced puzzles, you can have more than just two sets of, uh, of matching pairs in a row, column or block. Sometimes you can even get three sets of matching pairs, which is so powerful. Let's sit now with the same system here. Let's say um, you had uh, two empty cells here. Okay. Because we have two empty cells, they are spoken for. There's a three and a six there, no matter what. We don't know what order, but we know they are spoken for. So we go through the same procedure for the column. One, two, three spoken for. Four is missing, so we can put a four there and a four down here. 
Five is missing. We put a five there and a five down there. Six is here. Seven, eight, nine. So we now finish up also with a matching pair. The same principle works whether it's a row or a column. And the same principle works over here if you had a situation where there was two numbers missing. Let's take again the four and five. We'll go through one, two, three, four is missing. So you put a four there and a four there. Five is missing. You put a five there and a five there. Underline it to let you know that there's no other numbers that can go there. Now you've got the whole block with two matching pairs. When you, from now on, when you're looking at a row, a column, or a block, if you notice there's one or two cells missing, you now know how to fill them in. Well, here's another segment to show you things you can do with matching pairs. Guten Tag! Here we are again. Another session with your Sudoku guy, but this time it is another scenario. And it's a very important scenario. Remember me telling you earlier that the matching pairs are very powerful when you're solving Sudoku puzzles? Well, here's yet another feature of the value of a matching pair. And what I've got up on the board is here we have three examples. We have a row, we have a column, and we have a block. Let's look at this row. Ignore this section down here, but just look at this row and I'll show you something that's really neat. If you look at this row very carefully, you will notice that we have a matching pair. Two, four, two, four. Now that's important because once you see two, four, two, four, you know that in that cell is going to be a two or a four, in that cell is going to be a two or four. So two and four along that row are going to be spoken for. Therefore, any other two or four is no longer needed. So that means that if you've got a four here and a four is already taken, you can erase this four and this becomes a three. Now, if you've got a two somewhere else other than the two four and the two four, that can be erased. Here's one here, two eight. You can erase the two, get rid of the two, and that means that this becomes an eight. Bang, we've got extra numbers just because of that. But look, it goes even further. Because we've got an 8 here, that cancels out this 8. And we're left with a 6. So what have we done in that process? We've now led to another number. Because we've got, we've got a 6 now, that gets rid of this 7. So this, let me get rid of this, this, sorry. That gets rid of this 6, and this becomes a 7. So wacko. Wasn't that incredible? Just because we knew the rule, something like the rule of exclusion, that two and four means that other numbers, little numbers in that row can be eliminated. Boy, does that ever make a difference. Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five new numbers, just because we knew that little technique. Neat, eh? Now let's try the column. This column is somewhat similar, but a bit different. And once again, it's a situation where if you've got three numbers uh, down in here, we can, once we solve one, we can usually solve the others as well. Let's look at this one. This column has a matching pair as well. It is a seven, nine and a seven, nine. Now the rule basically says that if you've got a seven, nine and a nine in this column, it will get, you can eliminate the other sevens or nines if there are any. Well, it just so happens that there is one down in here. So we can get rid of that nine. So that becomes a three. Now because the three has been obtained, this three is no longer needed. So this becomes a six. Now that we have the six, is no longer needed here, so this becomes a four. And boom, voila, we've got all those numbers just because of that little simple technique. Now let's look at this block over here. In this block over here, we have a seven, nine again, matching pair. That means that we can say this seven is not needed. 
So we can er er el eliminate that 7, make this a 3. And when we do that, now we can work out very easily from what we learnt on the previous lesson that if you have one cell left in the block and you've got a matching pair, you can work out what that number is. And it's easy, I think. We can go 1, oh, it's a 2. It's a 2. So we've solved extra numbers just knowing that simple technique. It's so powerful, and as you go on in further into this course, you'll be using these techniques lots more. That's it for today. Bye for now. I want to show you something. See these, this, this here? Well, you know what? How do you put little numbers in? There's different ways of doing it. They both have their pros and cons. Here, we put them all squashed up together, and then you put a number underneath. That's one way of doing it. The other way is to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You see me using both. You can use whichever way you wish, but they all they both have their pros and cons. Larry has asked this question. Is Sudoku good for the brain? Yes, it is, because lots of thinking has to go on, different paths of thinking. As well as that, you've got to have the good memory. Yes, it is.